All right, let's jump into how chemical bonding works now. So how an element interacts with other elements is gonna depend on the arrangement of its electrons. So in the previous few slides, right, we talked more about the impact of protons and the neutrons, but now we're gonna focus in on the electrons. So electrons are arranged in what we call energy levels. Um, the first energy level, which is the closest to the atomic nucleus, uh, holds two electrons. And then the second and third energy levels can hold up to eight electrons. Uh, and we call this the octet rule. So an atom is most stable uh, when its outermost energy shell is full with eight electrons, octet rule. Right? Um, not all elements have enough electrons to fill their outermost shells. And those elements want to interact with other elements to uh, bring themselves up to that eight count, okay? So this is where we get chemical bonds. Um, so a bond is just an interaction between two or more atoms uh, that results in the formation of molecules. Molecules are multiple atoms bonded together. Uh, an atom can donate, accept, or share electrons uh, with other elements, okay? Um, and it'll do that until they fill their outermost shell. Uh, this then satisfies the octet rule, and then that molecule is stable. Okay, so there are four different types of bonds, ionic bonding, covalent bonding, hydrogen bonding, and van der Waals interactions. All right, let's start by taking a look at ionic bonding. So ions are formed when an atom does not have the same number of protons and electrons. Um, so that makes it charged. So a cation is positively charged uh, and they form by, they've lost electrons. They have fewer electrons than protons. Anions are negative ions uh, and they're formed by gaining electrons. So they have more electrons uh, than they do protons. Okay, um, so a way to remember this and I, <laughs> I don't know, it comes from way back when I took chemistry. Uh, cat ions are plusy cats, plusy cats. So you can remember that cat ions are positive plusy cats. Anyway, it's silly and it sticks with you. It's stuck with me for like 20 years, so there you go. Um, all right, so the movement of electrons from one element to another is called electron transfer. Uh, so when one, uh, one atom donates or um, accepts the electron, electron transfer, okay. Uh, because opposite charges are attracted, uh, a cation is attracted to an anion. Uh, and these ions will stay together in an ionic bond. Kind of think about like, uh, like magnets. The positive is attracted to the negative. Um, a nice example for this is uh, table salt, sodium chloride. Sodium is a cation, chloride is an anion. Uh, they're positive and negative. Charges are attracted to each other and then they stick together in that ionic bond. Okay, now we've got covalent bonding. So ionic bonds are strong, but covalent bonding is even stronger uh, because we're going to actually share, we're gonna share our electrons in this case as opposed to um, just being uh, attracted to each other by charge and held together by charge. So um, with our covalent bond, we're gonna have, uh, we have single bonds where one electron is shared. Uh, we can have double bonds uh, where we're gonna be sharing two, two sets. Um, and then triple bonds where we're sharing three. Uh, there are two different types of covalent bonding. So you know, like I said, they're single, double, triple, but there are two subcategories that we're gonna be dealing with. Um, we have nonpolar covalent bonding, and then we have polar covalent bonding. So in nonpolar covalent bonding, um, we have the electrons are shared equally between, uh, between the elements involved in that bond. So uh, I think our little example here is uh, methane, uh, carbon bound to four hydrogens. The electrons are equally shared between the carbon and the four hydrogens. All right. But in the case of water, we have that oxygen and we have our two hydrogens. Um, oxygen, even though it's neutral, um, 
it has many more protons than the hydrogens do. Okay, right? Each hydrogen only has a single, um, a single proton. So even though they're both neutrally charged, the oxygen is slightly more positive than the hydrogen atoms are. And so the electrons that are being shared between the hydrogen atoms and the oxygen um, are more attractive to the oxygen atom. So we end up with this, I'll, I'll put the little highlighter on so you can see in this little example here, um, there's this little squiggle, little squiggle guy, that's um, got a little plus sign. So it's slightly positively charged versus the two hydrogens that are slightly negatively charged. Um, and that, that polarity, the two ends are slightly different, uh, actually allows for some really cool interactions that we'll look at on, on the next slide. Uh, but even though you know, there's that little bit of you know, slight charge difference, that's, this isn't ionic. This, the bond between the hydrogen and the oxygen itself is still a single covalent bond where the electron is shared. It's just that the electrons are pulled a little closer to the oxygen. Okay. Oops. Okay. Sorry. I said it backwards. Let's, let's fix that real quick. So grab my little highlighter. So the, the oxygen, which is slightly more positive, it tracks the electrons towards it. And then that leaves, now that our, now our molecule is a little polar because those electrons are shifted towards the, um, towards the protons of the oxygen. So the oxygen end of the molecule ends up being slightly negative because it now has that, that little bit more of the um, electrons closer to it. And that leaves the two hydrogen atoms just a little bit positive, just slightly positive. Okay. so. The hydrogen polar, polar end of the molecule, slightly positive. The oxygen end is a little bit negative. All right. So we have something called hydrogen bonding. This is where that slightly positive and slightly negative polar covalent bonding comes into play. So a hydrogen bond, it's, it's much weaker than a covalent bond or even an ionic bond. Um, but it occurs because of that slight positive and slight negative uh, charge on the molecule. So we've got some waters here. This kind of bond doesn't require very much energy to break. Um, and it has a really neat property that is one of the things that makes water so unique and um, so necessary for life. We rely on... Um, surface tension. Well, we'll talk more about the properties of water in the next lecture, but uh, this creates some really interesting things um, out of these little slightly positive, slightly negative um, charged molecules. Um, let's see. And then finally, we've got van der Waals uh, interactions. These are just weak interactions between molecules caused by temporary partial charges, like a hydrogen bond, but it's not, um, it's not, just limited to hydrogen bonding, okay? This can involve other types of, um, of atoms. Uh, and these weak interactions also are important for biological systems. Uh, we see van der Waals interactions. Um, if you've ever seen like a, like a gecko or a lizard like climbing um, up a, like a wall, uh, they actually use van der Waals interactions, these slight charge differences, uh, and they can create charge uh, on the pads of their little their little digits. It's, it's really neat. It's something worth Googling if you're interested. All right. Uh, so that wraps up our building blocks of molecules. Uh, in the next lecture, we'll jump into the properties of water. All right. I'll see you then.